Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 630 of the Juicebox Podcast. On today's show, we'll be speaking with Susie. Susie has, you know, I I don't know if you know this about me. I don't like doing these opens. I do it because I think you deserve it. You deserve me to say, like, what the show's about. But in truth, what I'm thinking while I'm doing these is just listen to the show. It's really good. Please, come on, jump in there. Have I ever let you down? You know what I mean? Like, that's what's going through my head when I'm like, on this episode of the Juice Box Podcast. And then, I don't know, then I usually do the... You know, I give you the disclaimer, nothing you, uh, you know, what I mean? nothing you hear on the juice box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Please always consult a physician before making any changes to your health care plan or becoming bold with insulin. And listen, I understand that you deserve to know a little bit about what the episode's about, but I don't want to ruin anything. I mean, look at the title of this one, for example. Do you really want this ruined? You know what I mean? Don't you want to find out where the title came from? But I'll do it anyway. Uh, bullet points. Lesbians, sperm donors, type 1 diabetes. If that's not enough for you, I don't know what else to do. All right, there's going to be a little swell in the music. I'm going to do an ad, and then I'll get right to the show. This episode of the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by My Daughter's Blood Glucose Meter, the Contour Next One. Go to Contour Next dot com forward slash juice box to get started today and to find out more about the best little darn gosh darndest little great little blood glucose meter i've ever seen actually it is really terrific i'm not joking uh it's easy to i'll tell you about it in the ad what am i doing here contournext.com forward slash juice box the podcast is also sponsored by touched by type one touched by type one is a diabetes organization that is doing many things for type 1 diabetes. And I really just love what they're doing. That's kind of the simplicity of why they're able to be advertisers on the show. I said, I'd love to help people learn more about Touch by Type 1. And they said, cool, we'll buy ads. And I was like, right on. So touchbytype1.org. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram. It's a great organization doing things for people with type 1 diabetes that you would love. Go check it out. Hi, my name's Susie. I'm from Utah, and I have an eight-year-old daughter that was diagnosed about a year ago, and her name is Harper. Let's just get to it now, Susie. Do you have any other kids? I have one other son, uh, five years old. Are you part of the Great. large group of people who love me in Utah, or is are you just... Yes, uh, you are. I am in the Scott fan club. Uh, found you on the second day of diagnosis and um, you are talked about all the time in our house. Oh, I'm going to move to Utah one day where I will imagine I can be mayor or something. Or I think we would have a parade for you for sure. Okay. That's, that's my, yes. that's my new plan. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as COVID is over, we will plan a parade for you. I would like that. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> yeah. <we'd love> it. <laughs> I could act all like, Oh, that's silly. But I think I do. But you'd love it. I think I do it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I, I would, and I would complain about the plane ride the entire time. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. like you'd be like, oh, we brought Scott out to hold a parade for him. He just complains about having to fly here. <laughs> right, right. <Yeah. laughs> we'll take care of you. I love to complain. Um, okay, so how old is that kid with diabetes? Eight years old. Eight. And how long ago was it? She? Is she, yep. She. And it was September. So we're going on a year next month for diagnosis. Oh, wow. That's pretty, uh, yeah. pretty recent. Yeah. Uh, was it a surprise or were you like, oh, finally well, it's here? Nope. It was most definitely, um, Harper and my son, Grayson, we used, actually we used donor sperm and donor egg, uh, for them. And obviously when you pick out your donors, you pick out the best medical history you've ever seen in your life. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, no history of type one whatsoever. So we were very surprised that Harper was actually um, played in two soccer games that day and she had to pee on the way down and she had to pee on the way home. And it was just, and she, she was like Arden. She's a water sipper, never likes water. So she had drank an entire jug of water during the game. And I'm just thinking, well, she's working hard and she's drinking water. Yeah. 
Well, when we got home, my wife that night said to me, you know, I had a friend in high school and she had diabetes and the way they found out was her drinking a lot of water and peeing. And I immediately went into defense mode, denial mode, no way, couldn't be. And then the wheels started churning and kind of thinking about it. And that night I put out five pairs of socks and I told Harper in the bathroom, and I said, if, if you go to the bathroom tonight, each time you go, I want you to take a pair of socks and put it in your bedroom. And that morning we woke up and all five pair were in her bedroom and my heart dropped. And we went up to the clinic. Um, they took her blood sugar. She was 750 and they told us to get to the hospital right away. You figured it out in a day? Yep. Wow. I mean, it obviously now, like everybody says, looking back, she had lost three pounds um, for about two weeks, saw some irrational behavior, um, you know, freaking out. And obviously she was high at that time. And then just and noticed that she'd been drinking a ton of milk and water, but not really cluing in. But after we stopped, that we had, I mean, she could usually hold it for days and she never went at nighttime. And then after we had to pull over to stop on the way to the soccer game, 20 minutes away, this kind of started adding up. So definitely thank God we caught it. I feel like we caught it early, even though she was 750, she was perfectly fine. So it, it was tough in a way I'm taking her down to the hospital. Um, and she feels totally fine and she's about to get pricked and prodded you know, mm -hmm. quite a bit. Yeah. And she doesn't understand why. Before we, uh, before, I'm very, I'm sorry. I cut you off. No, you're fine. I'm just very grateful. Obviously I hear all the DKA stories. Very, very grateful for my wife to have that information about her friends, but you know, it's still tough, obviously going down with a kid that thinks they're perfectly healthy. Right. Hey, Susie, I'm going to have to stop here for a second because at the beginning I said, you're part of my fan club in Utah. I meant the Mormon church, but not the lesbian army. Which one did you mean exactly? <laughs> Not the Mormon Church. I'm just on the Utah fan club oh, with okay. God. That obviously we are not attending the church anymore. I was going to say, I was like, I got something wrong. I misunderstood something at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, like, but we were both raised Mormon. Yeah, we're both raised Mormon, which obviously most people are here, mm -hmm. um, but no longer in the Mormon fan club. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I, that, I mean, I don't know. I was about to say I don't know much about the Mormon religion, but what I really should say is I don't actually know anything about it, um, other than other than a lot of Mormons love this podcast, and uh -huh. that my expectation was you weren't going to allowed to be gay and be in the Mormon Church. Am I about right about that? That is absolutely correct. Okay, all right. yes. so These were my mm -hmm. assumptions. I just wanted to make sure they were right before we moved on, because as we all know, I will think about it incessantly the entire time we're talking. Exactly. If I, if I don't bring it up. <laughs> Okay. Right. Well, so that is really yep. lucky that that your wife knew somebody and that you got that information so very quickly. That's that's astonishing. Definitely. Do you feel like I know you're crestfallen and it's terrible, but was there any point in the the future where you're like proud of yourself for how quickly you figured it out? You know, I thank her all the time and I'm grateful. Uh obviously still devastated, but very grateful as I hear the different stories with DKA. I mean, the DKA on a plane, good God. Yeah. Uh, so very, very grateful. Very great. Because I don't, if she wouldn't have said anything that night, I think I would have let it go on um, longer. Just thinking, oh, she's exercising a lot. She's playing a lot. Um, I definitely would have let it go on longer. I would have, I would not have taken her in that soon. Where did you get the sock idea? I, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought there's got to be something that every time she goes, she could tell me. And I'm, I'm not thinking she's going to remember to tell me, hey, I went five, five times last night. Right. So I just thought of, I pulled out the socks and put them in there and thought, this is easy. Just grab a pair of socks each time you go back to your bedroom. Kind of brilliant, Susie. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Brilliant in its simplicity. <laughs> How um, to diagnose diabetes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First, you're going to need a whole pack of socks now. Right. <laughs> Follow me on this. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it's really crazy. Yep. Well, um, what made you want to come on the podcast? You know, I signed up last January um, as I'd been listening and I thought I'm going to sign up for this. And I obviously didn't sign up till August because I thought, what is my life going to be like in almost a year from now? And I also thought about, you know, you have so many episodes which have so much information. And I thought to get to an episode and say, okay, this is what this is what you got to do first couple days, you got to get these things done. And um, then getting on the right track of, of listening to the pro tip series, the defining diabetes series, 
But I just thought, you know, let's see what I'm going to be able to talk about a year from now going through all of this. Hmm. Interesting. Foresight. Yeah. I'm not accustomed to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'll say I am that type A person, mm -hmm. uh, type A, athletic, we're a very competitive family. So uh, diabetes is obviously a tough one when you have those traits in ways. You say uh, dealing with it. You're saying type A. You planned ahead for wanting to be on a podcast. That's exactly. <laughs> that might be a. There might be. Yeah, yeah, it might be type A plus a little bit of issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You might want to talk to somebody. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, does it make you uncomfortable to see things left on countertops? A hundred percent. <laughs> well, if it wasn't for a couple of small issues, you and I could definitely be married because I know how to live with somebody like that. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's hilarious. And my my wife is the complete opposite. So uh, she is the yin to my yang. Uh, mm. Does she make is it make you crazy when she doesn't care about the things that your brain cares about? You know, you just it's been 17 years. So you just obviously any marriage, you find a way to deal with their faults. And she deals with my faults and I, I love a clean house and she's okay. It's not a big deal. Cool. So you just learn to, Hey, this is, if it's my problem, that something's on the counter, then I'll fix it. She but ever it's tried not to, more her issue. She ever tried to get you to con like, she ever say something I would assume would be infuriating. Like you should relax or calm down. Does she ever say? Oh something? yeah. That's the number. That's like saying when a woman says, do I look fat in this dress? I mean, you do not say that to a type A person to calm down or relax. Those are like, those are poking the bear for sure. Yeah, I know not to say those words. I understand what yep. happens afterwards. So I'm, I'm, I'm good at <laughs> so, it. There. So when she says them, she's at her wit's end. But yes, they have come out. But those are not the words to say for I pay for sure. Susie, I'll make an admission. I do it once in a while still, but now I do it on purpose because I know it's going to piss her off. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Like, hey, just calm down. She's like, I am calm. Yep. Like, it just doesn't seem like you're calm. And <laughs> <laughs> yep. meanwhile that's a lady trick from 20 years ago that like meet meet your aggression with calm to make you feel like you're crazy you know what i mean yeah like, i learned it yep, 100 percent. yeah i didn't know that yep. on my own. i didn't i didn't know that move till i was married by the way <laughs> oh my god so you're right so your daughter starts with um injections a pump uh how, how does yep. it work out? Uh, you know you know that's one thing with in Utah, we have an amazing children's hospital. And so by going there, I'm feeling like we're going to get the, the best care in the United States. This is going to be great. And obviously, a few days in, start learning that it's the same as a lot of places are. I mean, they didn't even talk about a Dexcom. Um, I had to find out on my own. Mm -hmm. And so obviously, I put that as the number one thing to do is the minute you uh, get there, start working on getting that Dexcom. So we had our Dexcom within two weeks, but if I wouldn't have found out about it or thought about it, I think it could have gone on for a couple months. So they did, they never mentioned it. So we got on the Dexcom, um, uh, within two weeks, but those, obviously those two weeks without it were rough, you know, just for night sleeping. How did you know to ask? I'm, I'm sorry. Am I, am I missing something? Did you find the podcast quickly or did you find that information somewhere else? I found the podcast within the second day. Oh, okay. All right. So, and then I did find, obviously, it's, I looked at, saw your advertisements, and then obviously, pulling up diabetes, Dexcom pulled up. And then I did mention it in the hospital. I said, why don't we have one of these? And of course, the usual line is, well, we want you to get familiar with um, finger pricking. And, and I said, well, it doesn't take rocket science. After the fifth one, I think you got it. You know, I just... <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> I'm... Exactly. So uh, we got it down. So let's move on to the next thing. But again, just really silly with the technology out there that you send parents home, you're guessing on their ratios and send them home without knowing much and putting insulin in a kid and you don't have a Dexcom to see what you've done to them. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, right. Is she using an insulin pump now? Yep. Again, had to fight for that. We were told one year at the hospital, six months to one year. Um, but I did understand after doing research that she had to be on at least 10 units to, to make really the pump work for you. So we did finally get to 10 units total uh, back in February. Uh, but still with the process of getting the pump, she finally started at the first week of May. Which pump did you get? We went with Tandem. Okay. And 10 units because 
You're saying basal insulin. Yep. Right. To get the to for the basal for the minimum amount of basal you can get. What's the so minimum we were, on the tandem pump? I'm sorry, what? What is the minimum on the tandem pump? It was ten. You have to fill it with the minimum of a hundred units um, for the three days, but you have to be on at least 10 is what, I mean, we called the rep. We were making sure the hospital wasn't just saying that to say that, but the reps and everybody said, you got to be on at least 10 units of insulin to make this work. Ba- 10 units of basal a day? No, 10 units total. Total. Hmm. Yeah. So at that time she was uh, only three units, of, well, about four units of basal and six about for boluses. So 10 total. Yeah. Because I don't, I mean, listen, you're going to waste some insulin, but, I, and I guess you're saying it takes a hundred to fill the tandem. It only takes 85 fill an Omnipod. So, but still, uh-huh. if you, I mean, and, and it's a thing you hear people worry about all the time. Like I'm wasting all this insulin. And I mean, listen, if you're paying cash for it, then sure. you know, hundred percent, right? Like I understand. Right. Um, there's some people who can, I see people draw insulin out of pumps and move them to uh-huh. pumps and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I mean, if it worked for you, it worked for you. I think you just, in my mind, you can't have a pump until your minimum basal rates fit the pump, you know? So uh-huh. I, I think, yep. I think the dash is 0.05 an hour, an hour maybe is the lowest, or maybe it goes to zero mm-hmm. even now. I'm not sure. But that to me, like for people listening, if your basal needs are lower than the lowest thing the pump can do, then you're mm-hmm. in a bit of an issue. Having to use right. 10... I don't know how I feel about that statement, but I'm glad it worked for you. So, um, oh yeah. And yeah. so, and again, a fight, we had to fight to get it. We had to, and just so grateful that we were, able, we were able to get that down. So we got it about, what is that? About eight months in, okay. we were able to get on it. Cool. That's excellent. Um, yeah. And what about, this was during like COVID, right? So has your daughter been oh, to yeah. school during any of this? Yep. She went back to school the day she was, the next day after she was released from the hospital, they did have mask mandates at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't anymore here in Utah. Um, so, but yeah, it was all during COVID. Somewhere in your bag, on your person, or on your child's person, there is a blood glucose meter. You use it to test your blood sugar. It comes with test strips. Your doctor gave you the meter. You didn't ask for the meter you have. You didn't check into the meters that were available. You just took the one that the doctor gave you. It's not a big deal. I did the same thing at one point. Happens to everybody. But did you know that all meters are not created equal? That happens to be true. The meter that I like the most, that I find the most accurate, that I enjoy using, holding, shining the light in the middle of the night, etc, etc, you know blood glucose meters, how they work, is the Contour Next one. If you go to contournext.com forward slash juice box, you will be met with all of the information that you need to make an informed decision about your blood glucose meter. That's all. If you want to stick with the one you have, you should. But if you want a great one, you at least deserve to check out the Contour Next one. Contour Next one actually might be, right? Actually might be, not English, but you know what I mean. It could be cheaper in cash than you pay for the current meter you have through your insurance. Wouldn't that be crazy? And not for nothing, but the Contour Next one has second chance test strips, which means that if you touch the blood but don't get quite enough, you can go back, get the rest that you need without harming the test strip or the quality of the result you're getting back. Second chance test trips. It's a big deal. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. There's links in the show notes and links at juiceboxpodcast.com. If you can't remember, contournext.com forward slash juice box. Now listen, there's actually a lot more to this meter. You could pair it with your smartphone through Bluetooth and an app and get all kinds of reports and information back for your blood sugar tests. It's very handy. If you don't want to use the phone uh, for that, you don't have to. You can just use it like a meter. So there's some versatility there. It's super easy to hold and carry and use, transport. It's not too big, and it's not so small that you can't hold it. It's got a super bright light for nighttime testing and an easy-to-read screen. 
There's not much more you could ask for out of a blood glucose meter. And before I let you get back to Susie, let me remind you to go to touchedbytype1.org and check them out. That's really all they're asking. Go to their website, see what they're about. Follow them on Facebook, follow them on Instagram, give them a like. Touchedbytype1.org. All right. I did that all in one breath. No edits. Feeling pretty proud of myself. And I'm going to get you back. Here comes Susie again. Gotcha. What was it like sending her to school right away, like right after the diagnosis? Oh, it was tough. Uh, if we would, because at that time, no Dexcom, mm-hmm. you know, and, and so we actually, we went to the school every day to take her lunch, give her her dosages. Uh, they have a school nurse that's only there once every two weeks. So we would go every day to give her her shot. Um, but it's nerve wracking. I mean, because you're, she had an experience what a low, low really felt like. So it's just kind of crossing your fingers that she can acknowledge that when it happens. Yeah. It was very scary. Yeah, no kidding. So you said you didn't prepare for the podcast, but you have a list, right? I only wrote three things down, okay. which you could be proud of me. Okay. So, so we've gone, <laughs> we, went, we, we hit, hit two of them already, but I mean, I, so I take your point about their, there should be some sort of a crash course thing for the beginning, right? Like things right. to think about uh-huh. or things to learn. But at the same time, every time I try to build something like that it, mm-hmm. and people put in their their opinions, it feels like it gets too big. Right. And then right. overwhelming. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I like it that you boil. What was your third thing? Uh, basil. So first is Dexcom. Second is Juicebox podcast. Um, definitely. And then. My third would be getting your basil right, which you always talk about and is huge. And yeah. that took us, I mean, it took us months to really figure that out. And I think doing the learning about basil testing, um, and we got that off the integrated diabetes website, but that was huge, um, which helped out. Yeah. Did you use and, Jenny? Oh, I did have four things. Oh, go ahead, Scott. Did, did you use Jenny? Yes. I, we're signed up with Jenny since January. Oh, well, listen. Yeah. You know, with all the stuff we did, we did everything right. We listened to the juice box. We got all the tools. But I feel like we are in the matrix, but we don't see it yet. So I'm hoping that will come soon because we're certainly still go through our roller coasters. But I feel like we have all the knowledge. We understand all the knowledge. But applying it is that's the stage we're in right now. Susie, you you love this podcast, don't you? Oh, my daughter says, you listen to that guy way too much. All right. Well, first of all, <laughs> she's wrong. Tell her to shut her mouth. And this, like, I need these downloads, kid. Just calm yourself, okay? And the, right, um, and right. the, and the, and the second, <laughs> the reason I said that was, um, is because you said something that you didn't completely explain, but you said it like you knew it, like everyone listening would know. So you said like, mm-hmm. you, you feel like you're in the matrix, but you don't, like, so things are moving more slowly. You just don't, mm-hmm. you don't know how you're making it happen yet. So you 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 think you're doing the right things, and the right things are giving you the outcomes that you want, but you're not a hundred percent sure that you're doing them on purpose yet. We, and and doing them at the right timing because right. we understand the fat rise is coming, but you know we're still new into this. The hesitant to slam that with insulin to prevent that, but then of course the fat rise comes. She's up to one ninety. We're like, why didn't we do it? Mm-hmm. So it's just trusting ourselves and, and, you know, and you, you're able to see it and we know it's going to come, but still figuring out, well, does it come at that three and a half hour mark or three hour mark or two and a half? Because at times we have tried to catch it and then it's too much insulin drop or low at times we miss it. So it's just trying to get a feel for it more and figuring out the meals. I mean, the saddest thing is the girl eats the same thing, you know, maybe 20 meals max and we still are still trying to figure out 15 of those meals and the impact they have on her and just trying to get to that point. Arda went out with a friend last night and I think they just went to like a sort of like a bar type restaurant. I think Arden just got like French fries and she's like, I didn't even eat that mm-hmm. many. She came home. She's like, look how good my bolus is. And I was like, yeah, it looks great. And there was still mm-hmm. part. Of, I said to her, I was like, you know, you might hit, get a rise from the fat from the French fries later. And I looked at what she bolus and I thought she is going to see a rise. And mm-hmm. then 
I just let it happen so she could see it. Like, yeah. I, I didn't get yep. ahead of it when I knew I could have. I was like, I'm just going to let it work and then let her see how much insulin we have to use here to stop it. And then I can go back, right. go back later and explain it to her because it is one of those. That's a tough leap to make putting mm-hmm. insulin in for, for in your mind, something that doesn't exist because you think of insulin as covering carbs and, yeah. and you're just like, no, there's going to be a rise. It's been delayed by the fat in the French fries. We have to bowl us yep. right here. It's going to happen. And you need to see it a number of times before you believe it. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So we're, we're in that stage now and, it, and, you know, getting to where you can start thinking clear. I mean, those first few months are just foggy. And so getting to that stage, but we're, we're getting there and, and trying our best. Yeah. Good for you. What, what are some of the things that, if you can think, like, what are some of the things that had to happen that were kind of teaching moments along the way? Oh, just the, I mean, those getting up in the 250, 280s and just sitting there is excruciating. And obviously just sitting and watching it, especially when you know, and then you have Scott in your head, you need more insulin. (laughs) And then you give more, but you don't give enough because you're still nervous. And so then it doesn't come down enough. So I think it's just getting in that trusting that it's just so many frustrations of being afraid of food. And then when you do try the food, it just turns into a hot mess. Um, But again, you know, one out of 10 will have a success and we'll be like, okay, we can do this. We've we've learned what to how to do this. Let's work on the next thing. Mm, Good. That's excellent. Are, are you guys uh, managing equally, you and your wife, or is it more you? It would, because of my personality. I mean, I think I could win a contest of how often I look at the Dexcom number, for sure. I think I'd be in the top in the nation. So I'm obviously watching it constantly. Uh, not that my wife does not care, uh, but also knows that I'm neurotic and watching it constantly. Um, she's very great. Uh, she's great at the food, um, you know, measuring the food and Mm -hmm. getting all that out. And I'm, you know, we, like I said, we're the yin to the yang. She has her strengths with the diabetes. I have my strengths. And then it's just a matter of, of using those to try to help Harper. But your personality helps you. I'm imagining watch things, learn from them, re-implement stuff like that. Right. Taking notes. Okay. This is what happened. Let's, you know, let's try this different next time. Yes, exactly. Susie, you take notes? Unfortunately. <laughs> I have a beautiful little paper that has, I mean, before she was on the pump, it'd have lunch, uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, total carbs. Um, and then we just make a little note to the side. Okay, this happened at two hours after this happened, or you need more insulin at this point. And you know, hopefully getting to a point where that's all going to be in our head, Mm -hmm. but it certainly helps to look back and be like, okay, when we ate pizza, this is the disaster that happened. Let's try this next time. So, yep, I'm a, I'm a note taker. I'm a sticky note freak and a note taker. Do you have, are you having any, uh, like aha win moments? Like are, are, are some things becoming easier? Like, do you feel that happening yet? Because I agree. Well, I don't agree. I, I shouldn't have said I agree, but I think that after these things happen frequently enough that you shouldn't have to look at the CGM as or frequently at all. Does does that make sense that one day you're just like a hundred percent? Yep. Right. So depending on the meal, like um, we were a family of uh, Cocoa Pebbles, Captain Crunch, every sugar cereal you could think of we had. So switching Harper switched to Magic Spoon. Um, when she has magic spoon in the morning, I hardly look at my phone because I know it's guaranteed. I know that where it's going to stay, we don't get the spike. So I feel, I definitely do not look at my phone lunch and dinner. I'm still looking at it because we're still figuring those things out, especially when we just add something different or add something new. Um, I just don't trust it and just, you know, if she's going to drop low or she's going to get up too high. So, but I think gradually, I definitely hope because I listen to you other parents that hopefully down the road, this will just be life and it won't be something that's consuming us yeah. like it does. Um, because we're definitely in the stage where it consumes us. I, I'm going to be honest for a second. I, um, my wife bought some of that magic spoon cereal after watching you guys talk about it online. And uh-huh. Arden and I were like, what, what is this? And, uh, <laughs> so we tried it together. We both took like a, a little handful out of the box dry and we, we uh-huh. put it in our mouths and, 
Then we both just stood over the trash can with our mouths open, like, <laughs> letting it fall out. Arden's like, it sound, It feels like our, she said, it feels like a unicorn died in this box or something. Like, I forget what, exactly how she put it. Um, but I, I'm happy for anybody who enjoys it. I see people who love it. Like, I'm not, if you love it, great. We went, she went from Cocoa Pebbles, her all time favorite, to Magic Spoon Cocoa. And the fact that that happened is the miracle of all miracles. Yeah. Because obviously, Cocoa Pebbles tastes a lot different than Cocoa Magic Spoon. But again, it was a lifesaver because we have not, we're not, you know, a low carb family. I mean, we were the worst, we're very athletic, skinny, but we are not, we were not good eaters, not healthy eaters whatsoever. So definitely getting her to do that one switch. I bought probably $400 of different cereals just because I remember your episode when you wanted to get Arden, you want to get your A1C down, taking away the sugar cereal is a big step. And so that was where we started first that I spent $400 on cereal and we, she taste tested probably 30 and we hit magic soon and she went with it and I'm happy. That's great. Listen, I could probably bowl a cereal every day really well, but Arden wouldn't eat it that she doesn't eat it frequently at all now. Like I think Mm -hmm. there's like a box downstairs and it sits there for a long time and then Uh somebody eats it and then it's open and then I'm like the poor kid inside of me is like, oh, that's going to go bad. (laughs) <laughs> and then, yep. because no one's going to touch it again. So then I eat cereal I don't want to save $3, which is, uh, in health terms, stupid. Uh, so, you know, I'm mm-hmm. just, I, I feel like that. But I could, it took me a long time to figure out how to do cereal. And people are like, I don't know, uh-huh. how do you bolus for cereal? And the secret is uh, pre-bolus and use a lot of insulin. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> which is not something you want to be doing every day, obviously. Um, sure. Yeah. So if, sure. You, if you can find something else, I think that's terrific. I just maybe I had the wrong flavor. I don't know, but I was like, uh, uh, like you didn't even want to like move your tongue for fear that your tongue would taste it more. <laughs> so you just were using gravity to let it out. I was like, ha ha ha. Like just please fall out of my mouth. <laughs> and then I felt bad because I thought maybe I was like, you know, Im- you know, making an impact on Arden. Maybe she was over there loving it. And I'm like, oh, God, this is terrible. Uh-huh. But she was like, what is this? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and now it just sits there. And we said, and Kelly goes, you didn't like it? We go, well, why don't you try it? And she goes, I will. But she never has. <laughs> just, <laughs> just sitting there. Yeah, I think it's acquired taste. That's why I'm nervous. Because, you know, I'd give Harper a free day and say, okay, Saturday, let's have sugar cereal. But I'm I don't want her to remember what it tastes like because then she'll, she might do say, well, no, this is not as good as this. Yeah. I I have to tell you for anybody who's younger, they ruined cereal like 20 years ago. I don't remember what happened, but it used to just be sugar. And Mm -hmm. like, I would tell you that when I was 15, 10, that age in there, if you asked me what the best thing on the planet was, I would have said fruity pebbles and I would would have been Mm -hmm. right. And, Mm-hmm. Now when you eat them, you're like, this just tastes like somebody said, can you try to make this taste like Fruity Pebbles? And right. it just it's not yeah. it. So I don't know what has happened to I, listen, none of it's good. I'm not saying that. But the right. the, flavor, yeah. the flavor has changed. So Arden's not like a big cereal mm-hmm. person anymore. Um yeah. but everything I learned about bolusing for cereal, um, I translated into other foods. Because right. you know, like that that's the first time Cereal, getting cereal right the first time was the first time that I thought, wow, that's a lot of insulin. Like no one mm-hmm. would have ever told me. To, it, it And the insulin amount did not seem to have any correlation to the carb count whatsoever. It was just right, it was exactly. the amount that worked. And um, mm-hmm. and that was that was a big lesson for me. So anyway, we talked about and that. And that's a huge that what your point is, is that obviously, again, we follow the rules. We were told count the carbs. We got the scales. We're measuring it ridiculously. And then come to find out, uh, no, you need more insulin, like on, on different foods. Mm. And just accepting that when you follow the rules, you counted the carbs right, you know you got it right. But that's not, you know, that's not the case. Yeah, it's not what works for that one thing. Exactly. It's, it's a great lesson. When, when Everybody listening, when you figure that part out, when you figure out the part about like glycemic load index and just, you know, more commonly the idea that some of these foods just take they you know they take more insulin than their carb count would indicate or less sometimes by the way there's some foods that take right less insulin than their carb count indicates yep. once you figure that out it's such a big leap you know it's a great thing yep yeah and that's just that's just probably something that's come to us in the last two weeks and just starting to clue in that you know 
we counted the carbs, but nope, she needs an extra 10, 15 carbs to mm-hmm. cover this. So can we take a detour for a second? Cause I have a question. Yes. How do you explain to a child that you borrowed parts from different people and made them? <laughs> well, um, I was older. Um, I was for, well, by the time I got pregnant, uh, 39. Mm-hmm. So I was older. I had tried for five years, um, IVF three times, miscarriages, all of that. So explaining that to Harper is um, more like, you know, I wasn't able to create my own eggs. Right. Um, and then obviously we're women. So we needed a man. So we needed a donor. Um, and you have a donor. And, and we've just explained that to them since they were little, kind of like if they were adopted, you talk to them when they're little and not this big surprise that comes out when they're 12, I'm adopted and yeah, right. what happened. And it's just been natural and it's never, you know, it was really never talked about, never brought up, but it's always there. Like if you ever want to talk about it, we're here to talk. But it just becomes normal because it's talk. It's brought up at the beginning. It's you cover uh-huh. it the same way every time, right? Like there's no, you don't turn it into right. a big dramatic thing. Like just, this is what right. we did because, and here's why. Exactly. And what a blessing they are for us. Um, great kids. And just, yeah. And I'm sure more questions will come as they get older, but they haven't come. And I'm, you know, you don't keep shoving it down their throat. Now just remember, this is how you were created. But <laughs> yeah, it just. <laughs> don't bring it up on Wednesday just, morning during a long. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let me remind you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I- but I'm sure at some point it will be. And, and, you know, another thing to point out is when we picked out the sperm, there's, we know of 24 other, we call them dibblings because it's a donor sibling. So it's a dibbling out there. We know of 23 other kids this guy's produced and not one has type one. So pretty sure it didn't come from his side. Interesting. Yeah. So it's kind of like a little research project you can do and no, no, this is what do you get paid? all clear. What do you get paid for a donation? I want to do that math times 23 real quick. Do you have any idea? Okay. Well, to buy the sperm back in my day, so she's eight and uh, probably had it for two years, 10 years ago, um, one thing of the sperm was $1,200. So I'm guessing I would think they'd get at least 500 for a little donation. A little donation. But uh, they're doing a lot of donations to make 23 kids. Yeah. Well, I saw, I came up yeah. with 11500 I'm su- I'm subtracting some hand cream here, so maybe like forty five dollars. <laughs> you gotta a, get the, the the YouTube or the yeah, video yeah, on. Yeah, it's not that's yeah. not a bad take at all. Also, you've <laughs> just said maybe the greatest thing that anyone's ever gonna say on this podcast. Back in my day, sperm cost. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, now I don't know what the going rate is today, but back in the day, you know, we bought eight vials of it. 1200 bucks, eight tries. That's what it came out to be. I, I imagine it's going to take me years for someone else to put words together that I didn't expect. Like you just did. <laughs> it was really wonderful. I could stop the podcast right now and cancel the whole thing and never put up another episode. Be completely happy with it right now. <laughs> awesome. That was really, really wonderful. And you said it so matter of factly. I was like, that's absolutely perfect. Back in my day, this is what sperm cost. Um, I thought, who have those words ever been spoken before? You know what I mean? <laughs> no. I don't think so. It's just my, just my language. The yeah. last time someone said back in my day to me, they were talking about a candy shop that used to be in town. And you'd go in and like for a nickel and get like a handful of candy. And back in my day, there was this thing. And I am just absolutely delighted oh, right now. I don't even know where to go next. Awesome. I don't think you and I can do any better than that right now. I, I think maybe... Well, uh, I was going to say, you say that you make up words. I'm very known as making up words as well. So I thought, if I can go this entire podcast without making up a word that's not really a word, it'll be a miracle. Oh, you made up a so, phrase I don't think anyone's ever spoken before. So you're doing right. really well. <laughs> that's, there you go. That's um, that's it. I, I have an inappropriate question. Can I ask it here? I knew you were going to ask me an inappropriate question, so I've been prepared. Are you Gold Star? <laughs> Uh, no, no. How about your wife? Neither one of us. Neither one of you. Okay. No. Uh, in, in our case, I feel like you got to get that out of the way to be a hundred percent sure. I see. (laughs) (laughs) So there's nothing like being near a penis for you to make sure, you know, you don't want to be near one. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, it doesn't revolt us. Okay. It's not a big deal. I think it's just more that we found each other and this is who we wanted to be with the rest of our lives. That's lovely. Now, could I, could I have married a man? Yes, but not the same. Interesting. You think you would have been okay? Yeah. I think it would have been just kind of a, yeah, we're doing this. This is what you do. Especially, you know, gr- growing up in Utah and gay. I mean, it's not, it's definitely, in, I mean, things have changed so, so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, from when I was 20 to now close to 50, things have changed tremendously. I mean, back then you hit everything. Um, nothing was talked about. So it's now you go out to the mall and you see people holding hands left and right. So yeah. it's definitely different times, but yeah. I think I could have, and I, I know a lot of people that have, um, as you know, in the Mormon church, you have missionaries that go out or maybe people don't, you go out for two years on a mission. And I know probably in my personal group of friends, at least 10 return missionaries that are now with loved ones and living a happy life. Okay. So you're aware of people who have come back, met a man, they're with them, and you're fairly certain that they're in their heart, they're playing for the other team? A hundred percent. Gotcha. Do you think and that- it usually takes them about 20, 30 years of marriage to finally, you know, to like- accept that, and then you go your separate ways. Yes. Interesting. Oh, yeah. that's probably happening to me right uh, now. The, the <laughs> irony in the church is like back, I'm going to say back in the day, because you love that thing. Think so back in the day, the irony of the church is that they would go to their bishops and say, Hey, I'm really struggling, I have feelings for my same sex. And they'd say, Well, just go on a mission. And what a mission is, is you're placed in a room with the person of the same sex for two years, not to leave each other's sight, and that's going to fix the problem. So, unfortunately, I think that's where I, I believe those things have changed now, but back. That's what they used to do, and that caused a tremendous amount of problems for these poor kids. Oh, so they would they would take a if we're talking about a female, just for example. So if you said that, then they'd send you away basically for two years to live with another female. Well, to say go on this mission for the church, you know, devote your life to the church, go on this mission, but then you're going to be with a companion because you're always with a companion on a mission mm-hmm. who is the same sex. So. If you really think about it, if someone says I'm struggling with feelings for someone with the same sex and then they put you in a room for two years with someone with the same sex, that's really not going to help the problem. No, it seems like if you were to get lucky enough to be in the room with another person in your situation, it would just be 24 months of bang, bang. That doesn't make any sense. Ah. Yep. Yep. So I I hope they change their ways by now, but Hmm. very, a lot of, um, in my wife's family, three out of the seven are actually gay, and uh, the other two had gone on missions as well. Oh, super interesting. Yeah. It has nothing to yeah. do with diabetes, but I'm fascinated. No, but here's your class 101. That's excellent. When we're done recording this, I'm going to ask for your best trick, because um, it's not appropriate for the podcast, but I want to know like one thing I'm doing wrong that you could like <laughs> straighten me out on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Okay. I'll let you know. You have a different perspective, so you might really understand this. Um, there you okay. go. <laughs> Can you imagine if you're like, I don't know, I'm not really very good at it. That'd be the most amazing conversation. <laughs> <laughs> be like, Scott, I get a lot of complaints. You really don't want my tips. <laughs> I I don't think that would happen. Okay. Ooh, all right. Well, then I'm in. All right. Hold on a second. Um, yep. Okay. So we're using control. Are we using control IQ or basal IQ? Yeah. Uh, control IQ, but not. we're using sleep mode 24-7. Okay. I, we just struggled with that control IQ, you know, that, that would leave them up there at the 220 for just way too long. And so we would like to correct it on our own. I, I would love to know out there who the Kenny is of the tandem pump, because I know with Kenny with the looping, but we just cannot figure out the algorithm to make it work with the, for us on the control IQ because we, we would just, it just stood out, sit high way too long. Well, so I, we, we do sleep mode now. Okay. I just did an interview with a trainer uh, for Control IQ, which will be up pretty soon. And by the time people hear okay. this, will have been like six months ago. But uh-huh. I don't know that I got the answers I was looking for either. So, yeah. So we'll see. Um, and the one frustrating part is the sleep. The sleep mode is great, uh, you know, during the day. and But at night, it's, again, trying to figure out the algorithm to how to, can we make it work for us? Because it's keeping her... You know, before we switched over, we were a nice 85, 95, 100 area. And now it obviously helps us sleep at night because we know she's not going to have a low. But 
just having her sit at the 110, 120 all night is frustrating because mm-hmm. we know that, that, you know, she could be lower, she should be lower, but it's preventing her from going that low. So I know that other people out there are getting A1Cs in the fives with this pump, but it's just figuring out how to make it work for you to be able to achieve that. Yeah, those were some of the questions I was asking. I was like, is there a way to like trick the settings or, you know, make things, mm-hmm. then you make something more aggressive and it takes away the basal and then that kind of has the, the opposite effect that you're looking mm-hmm. for. It, it's going to be, all the algorithms are going to be really interesting. They're obviously in their infancy right now, the ones that, mm-hmm. are, that are retail. And the the next real goal you you have to hope for here is for the companies to go back to the FDA and get r- pr- more approval for a lower target. Right, and then exactly. That, that should then just allow you to, you know, tune a pump to look for, you know, just say, oh, I would rather this be my target and then let it make yeah. those decisions that way. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but uh, when right. I have the opportunity and I'm with those types of people, I do advocate for that all the time. Um, mm-hmm. And I just think it's incredibly important because you don't want to, you know, there's some people using do it yourself algorithms that are, you know, you, you can target lower and, right. you know, it would be nice if the ones that worked, uh, you know, with less intervention from you, you know, you not, mm-hmm. having, not having to build an app on your computer or something like that. Um, if they would let you do the same thing, that would be great. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, if anyone listening is a <clears throat> podcaster or anything like that, you really, I, I just recently trans, I just moved the conversation effortlessly from sex tips to algorithm. Pumping. You didn't even see it happen. I'm a genius. And it flowed. Yeah, it flowed. <laughs> Damn right. It did. And, um, and I, uh, I've just been really proud of myself since it happened. So <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't awkward. It didn't anything. I just went right from that to zoom. And I was like, ah, man, I'm good at this. That's what I was thinking as I was saying it. I was like, <laughs> Damn, this is good. This is why Susie loves this podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Holy oh. crap. So how does your daughter um well, actually hold on, I have one more question before I get to that. Does your son have any concern about diabetes or because he understands that you guys that they're not natural from the two of you that that, that maybe isn't an issue? That's a new spot here for me. The the siblings and being worried because uh, Right. Thing. He's, he, we had him tested. He doesn't have any of the, the traits. So we know it can still happen, but he, we did have, um, with the trial net, we had him tested. Um, but he's, you know, he's still five and he's a boy. So kind of more like three in mentality, but he, he did ask one time, am I going to get this? Um, but other than that, not really. Not really. Is he from the same donor egg or sperm? Yep. They're a hundred percent. They're, they're full siblings. Oh, 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 wait a minute. I didn't realize that. Yep. Okay. All right. Yes. Oh, so that it is a concern. Right. right yeah. Right, right. In, in the fact, but again, we had him tested and. No, no, and, no. I just meant, yeah, yeah. It's reasonable to, to think that way because. Right. The same mother and father. Yeah. Do you, even uh-huh. think, do you talk, do you talk about it that way or you don't say the same mother and father, right? Same donors? Donors. Okay. Yeah. You say donor because we're. We're the moms. Right. Yeah. No kidding. I just, yeah. I knew there was probably better words in there. I just didn't know what they were. You're fine. Oh, well, please. Yeah. Look at me. I'm a little too old to be woke. I'm good. <laughs> I'll just say it. And if I don't understand what I'm saying, you can just tell me I'm saying it wrong and I'll go, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I do not take any offense. But we go, we go by mama and mommy. So cool. What, yeah. what do you want for grandparents' names? Do you have any idea? We started teasing Kelly the other day about it. Like, what do you want to be called? Like, Grant, she got all like, no. Then we landed on Special K to make fun of her. <laughs> I think it's going to stick. It's going to be terrible. Uh, but do you, do you ever think about that? I know your kids are so young, but. What, what no. You, no? Yeah, I don't know what this is. No. Mean. I'm just hoping I make it till then. <laughs> <laughs> Did you I wait? I mean, we had these kids. I was, I, so I, I was 40 when Harper came, and then Grayson came at 43. So. Oh, oh yeah. I just, I just need to. I got to pull off somehow to make it to 90 to enjoy these grandkids. No kidding. Is that um, how long have you been married? Oh, we've been together close to 17 years. Um, marriage, obviously, because it wasn't legal right. um, for quite some time. So married six years. So seven. How how long did you fight with the IVF before you did what you did? IVF was, um, geez, four years, okay. $130,000. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. Wow. You could have bought a person yeah. for half that. It wouldn't have been legal, <laughs> but it would have been quicker. That's really insane. Uh, do you ever look at those yeah. kids and you're like, put a lot of money into this. <laughs> you guys better, better go to college and learn something because mom is going to need, need a condo need, when this is over. <laughs> yeah, I need you to take care of me when you're older. So no, come on. I look at those yep. kids. I'm like, one of you better pull me out of the fire when Kelly kicks me out here, which is obviously <laughs> going to happen at some point. And so, exactly. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, totally. Uh-huh. Very bizarre. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So you guys have been together 17 years and and that's that's off and on dating obviously you go through your your times of dating but i would say 17 years yeah oh okay so So we dated for 17 years and then officially married six officially living together nine that kind of stuff what's the old joke about u-hauls and lesbians what do i can't think of i'm not that's lesbians meet and then within the first week you got the u-haul to move in ah (laughs) <laughs> that would be it <laughs> that's the joke yep. i couldn't i couldn't remember yep. I, I know it's there because a friend of mine used to say it all the time and i was like what did she used to say um yeah and that's it i have a friend here you go for all of you out there who don't know any lesbians i have a friend who owned a home like as a younger person like really hard worker it's an amazing uh, has an amazing career helping people bought herself a home in her 20s sold the home so that she could move in with a woman and I would say that within 18 months she didn't live with her anymore (laughs) but she used the money from the sale of her home to put a down payment Mm. on another home that they all moved into but because the other woman had children she felt bad and let her stay in the home so then my friend had to go to to an apartment pretty common (laughs) and when I said to her oh my god this is horrible she goes this is a story of my people. It is not a big deal. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> this happens all the time. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, eh, it's probably going to happen to me again. I went, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know why. Yeah. I just have been, I just thought of that just now. <laughs> it was such a long time ago. I still feel badly mm-hmm. when I hear that story. Um, mm-hmm. But that's really, uh, I mean, it's really cool. Cause you, I mean, honestly, you, you work really hard to put your family together. You know, mm-hmm. like most 100%. people yeah most people don't have to put this much effort into being together no. or to having their children like you guys are really gone for it here like is, right it, do you get a lot of joy out of it or is it or did you find out it's just like everybody else and you're just like oh all right well it's fine oh no a hundred percent joy i mean worth every penny worth every heartache worth every tear worth all the happiness so uh, do you definitely think, worth it do you think the work made it sweeter like like the like the journey you were on, do you think it makes you appreciate it more? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, when you go through four years of of trying and all the emotions and the miscarriages, and then once you have the children, I mean, it is just it's an amazing feeling. We're very blessed, but you know, when you have that helicopter ness to you too, because you know what it took to create these kids, um, but also trying to let them live their own life. But definitely, you know, when we'd be with other heterosexual couples at a park, you know, we can see the difference with us. I mean, we're watching every little minute because again, we know the, how hard it was to create where the others, you know, it was a quick night of fun. Right. And hopefully so we went through a lot of pain. To <laughs> create them, so. yeah, We definitely kept an eye on our kids a lot more than others for sure. I have, I have friends. I would never say their names, but they have three children. And she told me one time, she goes, each one of those kids was conceived after a drunken wedding. <laughs> she's, right. she's like, she goes, had I not been invited to those three weddings, I don't even know if I'd have children. <laughs> uh, so I take your point. I really do. Uh, yeah. It's kind of, it's lovely. Honestly, it, it, it's really great. And also I'm thinking this episode's totally going to get me kicked out of like that, that, that Mormon group that loves me so much. I think that's the, this might be the uh, end of it right here. There. <laughs> They they've come a long way. They're very open minded now. I think you're gonna be okay. Cool. I I don't want to get kicked yeah. out. I totally think Utah is right. one of the places I could end up retiring to. Awesome. So, we would love to have you. Yeah, it, looks, it really does look nice there. Um. Anyway, well, is there? I feel like we didn't talk about diabetes. That's your fault though, because you have like seven great things going on in your life for a podcast. So, um, <laughs> but is there like what is your next steps? I guess like you've been at this about a year. You're right. Like, what do you think the things are you have to get accomplished? Like, it, it must be in your so head. So we're, right? yeah, we're the, our next thing to conquer is the glycemic indexes. 
and just just learning those, getting a feel for them, understanding them. And I, I, that's our next thing to conquer. Okay. So just being able to look at food and thinking this is going to need more than, than yesterday. Exactly. Cause we second guess ourselves all the time. Well, what's going to get, what's going to be in 30, what's going to be an hour. I think just getting more comfortable. This is when it's going to happen and just trusting it. And if we fail, it's, you know, it stresses us out. And so mm. just trying to get where, Hey, we failed. We're going to try again. And just trying to, Keep going. To adapt that, so it yeah maybe we're going to fail ten times, but one time we get it, it's going to be well worth it. I, I'm so I'm not like the taking notes. I've never done that. Like the, mm-hmm. the the nuanced stuff, like really knowing technically detailed what's going on. Like I've become good at explaining it for the podcast, but in my personal life, mm-hmm. I just like roll. I just go hard and right. I, like you know, like I I used to say all the time when we were using the Omnipod PDM. You just like, I'd push the up button, like as you're like, you know, trying to choose carbs and it's one, two, three, four, five, and it starts going a little faster. And I think, oh, 60. Mm-hmm. And I stop and it would stop at 66. I wouldn't even bother like going back down to 60. I was like, that's close. Enough. Right. You, you know, right. Like, and, yeah. Because uh-huh. I'm not weighing the food either. And sure. I started learning that more often than not, I was, I was erring on the side of caution with the insulin to begin with. So more was always. Uh, it seemed to lead to better outcomes for me to begin with. Like, don't get me wrong. Not like, you know, this thing is five units and I've, I've chosen 12. Like it's more like it's mm-hmm. five units and I went with six or, like, right. so, you know, so these like glycemic impacts or mm-hmm. even fat and protein stuff or like the hard hitting stuff like cereal. Once I learned to just be aggressive, then a lot of the problems went away. Now I know people end up being too aggressive when they hear that and they get lows later mm-hmm. And then that becomes mm-hmm. more of an issue of timing. Um, sure. But it, it does it does take, like you said, it just takes time to like see it happen over and over again until one day you just go, this meal is eight units. I know, right. I know it, you know, or five or four, or whatever. Um, and then you just kind of mm-hmm. go with it. I don't pay that close attention to, I mean, we pre-bolus, but I don't like, I don't like set a timer or something like that. Y- you know, yep, I, I got the timer going. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a timer. I have like this. It's been long enough. Yeah. Go ahead. Or or Arden came yeah. out of those um French fries yesterday, and she's like, she had like gelato or something in the freezer. And she's like, I wonder when do uh-huh. I get my gelato? And I was like, Well, uh-huh. you didn't bowl us for the fat, so we're bringing that down now. I said, If you're uh-huh. hung- if you're hungry, I could make it fall faster, and then we could catch it with the gelato. And she goes, Okay. So then I just, bol- uh-huh. I bolus like 35 carbs. I don't know how many carbs are in gelato. I don't know how much gelato mm-hmm. she's going to eat. Like, I just, I don't even know. You right. know, like, here's a right. lot. This seems like a reasonable amount. And then we yeah. just ca- caught her at like, she was like 140 diagonal down. And I sent her a text and I said, I'd start getting the gelato together now. And she's like, oh, mm-hmm. great. And then a couple minutes later, she's like, can I eat it? I'm like, yeah, it seems like now's a good time. And, you know, yeah. then later we probably missed by, It'd be a unit, you know, for her. So maybe mm-hmm. I should have said it was more like 39 carbs. Now, was the gelato 39 carbs or did, or was, right. the, or was the gelato 20 carbs and 20 of that I needed to continue to fix the fat rise from the French fries? Like, right. I don't know. And I personally don't, I don't kind of don't care. Like I just right. made it happen. So. That's and, cool. and hearing you say those things is what we hold on to because we are beating our heads against the walls and we're like, it's going to come. It's going to come. We just got to keep trying. Yeah. Yeah. For anybody listening, I've never written anything down about diabetes in my life. <laughs> so, like, I, don't, I don't even like, I would, not, that, that makes me upset to hear that. It's like, oh, I'd have to take notes. There'd be stickies. Uh, um, yeah. 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 I, I, I just go with um, like, just find the, the rhythm of it kind of thing. And it's, it's also why I'm so grateful that Jenny and I got together on, the pro tips and stuff like that, because she does mm-hmm. have like, based on experience, some mathematical ideas around, you know, f- for people who want to hear about it that way. So, yeah, but for right. me, I'm just like, I'm just like, try more. <laughs> like, I, I'm the only person in the world who was brave enough to put a hashtag up more insulin one time. <laughs> I don't think anybody exactly. else thinks that way. I'm like, exactly. what do you do? I'm like, oh, it looks high. I'd use more if I was you. How much? Like, I don't know. I, I mean, it's, you know, till it comes down, <laughs> like I get to it, you know, is that right, actually right. helpful? That is actually helpful for you. It, I mean, there's been so many times where you're in our head saying more insulin, 
more insulin. And, you know, it's just, it helps because it just makes you feel better. I mean, you shouldn't be panicking at 250. Well, she's already got this much on board. Do I dare give her more? And it's been two hours. You got, obviously she needs more. And, you know, we kept going back and forth. We counted the carbs. We did it right. But it's just finally getting comfortable knowing, okay, she's going to be fine. We can catch it, you know, feeling more comfortable that you can catch it as it comes down. I think a lot of our issues too is just, is she's a very active kid and just never wanting, you know, going to the playground and, oh, here's a low, here's a low, you got to stop. And that was what was killing us, uh, playing soccer, playing basketball. Oh, you got to stop. And just finally figuring those out. And we're still not great. I'll give us a B now, but we're certainly better that she's not having to stop all the time because of lows. Um, because we, we really, we just counted the carbs like the, uh, the doctor office told us, gave her the carbs. And then of course she goes out and plays a half hour early. Well, now we realize what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, she's going to drop low because she's got all that insulin in her and just things like that, that they don't tell you that you finally start cluing into. And we learned from you. I think just not having active insulin during activity is a big step towards getting that all together. hundred percent. Yeah. 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 It's funny that you think, well, why wouldn't somebody just tell me that? But if they didn't explain the timing of insulin to begin with to you, then the idea of having active insulin is meaningless to you. Um, because, right. because even if it's well covered active insulin, like even if you've done a great job timing it, it mm -hmm. still might be an issue during, during exercise. If the exercise is, is vigorous enough. Having said that, like I've never, I don't shy away from it. Like if Arden's going to be active, I still bolus for things like, but, mm -hmm. I, but you know, those boluses are also fairly well-timed and considered and her basil's right. And her insulin to carb ratio is correct. Like, so it's not like it's easy for people to say like, Oh, I, I, I did a good pre bolus. I'm like, yeah, but you know, we don't know the rest of this. Like maybe your basil's, you know, too strong or too weak, or maybe you're, you know, maybe you're using too weak of a basil and making up for it with a strong meal ratio. And now you have way too much active mm -hmm. insulin. And, during this activity, there's just, you know, I, I don't say it for my health, like it's basil, right? Pre bolus, mm -hmm. meal impact, like you have to, those are the things you get those things right. And then a lot of these problems disappear. And your A1C sits w about where you want it. And your time and range is way better. And so mm -hmm. it's just, it's just what it is. It's just then everybody has to go through the process on their own of figuring it out. Right. I'm going to ask you in a second if there's anything that we haven't spoken about that you want to, and I'm going to tell you that I will resist every urge, and I won't do it, but I want to call this episode like <laughs> former Mormon lesbian mom or something like that. No. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I still live in Utah. I still need to have my Mormon friends. You think they'll come find you? <laughs> hey, my, the pitchforks might come out. So. <laughs> Let's say you're a little joking tired. about that, right? <laughs> Yes. Yes. There's never been. Has there been a pitchfork mob ever? Like no. no. I'm, I'm while you tell me if there's anything we haven't spoken about. I'm going to Google Mormon pitchfork mob. Oh boy. <laughs> I think the only other thing is that we were talking about. You know what I wish I would have known those first couple of days, and we hit everything. The only other thing I'd say in those first couple of days, compression lows when she gets the Dexcom, which you've talked about, but just to have on an episode with a few other tips when you first get diagnosed, but. You know, those compression lows, when you don't know that that's a compression low and you're newly diagnosed and you got a 50 arrow down, I mean, running down that hall to her room thinking I've killed her. I mean, those are excruciating. And yeah. then not knowing, and we didn't hear the episode about the compression lows until like probably five days after we had had a bunch of them. <laughs> and we're finger pricking the poor girl in the night. We're juicing her up. And she was never that, it was never 50. So Definitely know that you can have a compression low. It is not there. It's not the true number. And it's just because they're laying against it. Um, but that would have been nice to know because that was probably, it was probably a good six days of hell that we didn't clue into that. And we would have clued in more if obviously we would have been sleeping and we had our brains intact. But at that time, you're just, you're, you're a caveman. You don't even know what's going on. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, good news. There's no uh, Google returns for Mormon pitchfork mom. Thank God. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're all I'm good. okay. We're all good. You're going to be I'll, fine. I'll be safe. <laughs> I'm I'm hopeful that the G7, because of its new form factor, the way it's flatter, right. I'm hopeful that that yep. does, does away with, with compression lows a little bit, mm -hmm. or at least helps a little. 
Um, but and I think it'll help with littler kids too. I mean, obviously our, our daughter's skinny, athletic. I think it'll help be able to place it more. She has, she has not wanted to try the legs at all that she's agreed when the G seven comes out, she'll try the leg. Mm -hmm. And I think that'll help just, you know, maybe get in an area that will not have a compression low. Um, but with it being so much smaller and flatter, I think the kids will be willing to try new areas as well. I've been thinking about that too. I'm wondering if Arden will say, cause Arden is very regimented where her Dexcom goes. Mm -hmm. It's just one side, other side back, yep. back and forth on her hips, just back and forth yeah. and back and forth is where she always wears them. She always has. Um, mm -hmm. and maybe the new size will make her feel like, Oh, I could probably like put that somewhere else or on the back of my arm. Yep. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what we're hopeful for. Cause we're just back and forth on arm left and right, left and right. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. I tell you, when you start them when they're little, in their head, it becomes like a rule. Yep. Like, this is yep. where my Dexcom goes. And so, mm -hmm. if you say, why don't we try it here? They're like, that's not where it goes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and that, that's sort of it. Hey, yeah. um, since neither of the kids are naturally either of yours, uh, this is such a, uh, I'm going to ask a question that I find really interesting. Do they pick up any of your personality traits? 100%. <laughs> it is very you know nature versus nurture it's very interesting because i carried harper um had a lot of my personality um and my wife nicole she carried grayson and he is the, exactly like her hmm. so it's very interesting like um personality wise and how they are it is definitely they you know how we each carry them they are very similar to us yeah is there any autoimmune in your or your wife's? I know this isn't related to your children, but is there any autoimmune in your families? Did you know what you were looking for? Or did you? No, none. No. Nope. Celi Nothing. Celiac. Never. Nothing. I thought I was the old school diabetes was you didn't eat right. Um, not really knowing a lot about type one. Right. Um, and then the only other thing is the donor, donor egg. She had um, the only thing negative was, or not negative, but she had uh, sports asthma where it would just say every now and then she'd need an inhaler after she played sports, which thought, well, this is no big deal, but I don't think that really contributed. I think I, I do know exactly when Harper got sick and, um, you know, six months later, she's got type one. Sports asthma can't be autoimmune. Yeah. Let's look just to save. Exercise induced asthma autoimmune. What triggers exercise induced asthma? Hold on a second. Um, this is an NIH article, asthma and autoimmunity, a complex, but intriguing relationship. It's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm trying to see when this was written. I just, you know, was it written back in the day? Yeah, it was back in the day when sperm was cheap <laughs> and men were men. Uh, it was about 2008, actually. I guess that is about right. It's when sperm was cheap yeah. and men were men. Um, exactly. <laughs> can autoimmune disease cause? These are things that people Google. Uh, mm. A clinical manifestation of asthma are mostly the result of dysregulated immune systems similar to autoimmune diseases. See, that made me think of that because my son has a couple of um, like normal things in the world that he's allergic to. You know, rag, mm -hmm. ragweed trees, stuff like that. And he just developed Hashimoto's this past year. Oh, wow. I, intru I don't know. Like, I'm literally just spitballing here. So, yeah. Yeah. No. Just interesting yeah. to think about. Um, same thing as like eczema and autoimmune. Like, even if you just have right. like, a little dry, patchy skin somewhere, stuff like that. I don't uh -huh. know. I think a lot of immune issues are popping up in the world as we as we populate the planet longer and as we uh, microwave more plastic and you know, exactly cetera, what we're eating, what's our environment, yeah, yeah all that stuff. Um, yeah, cool. Well, Susie, you were delightful. This was excellent. oh, I'm so glad I got a delightful. Susie, you it's said, all I wanted in life. <laughs> you said you said back in the day when sperm was cheap, so you, you're getting a delightful <laughs> right away. And Sweet. thank yeah. you so much. No, are you kidding me? This has absolutely been like the, this is going to be the best hour of my whole, of my day. I really, uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you this. for all you do for all of us. Scott. we really appreciate you. Oh, you're very kind. It's, um, I, you know, I end up repeating myself a lot because people reach out a lot, but it really is my pleasure. I, I love making the podcast and, um, oddly enough, I really enjoy the Facebook group, which uh, I say oddly mm -hmm. enough because I did it under protest. 
Um, I really did, I did not want to be the, you know, quote unquote owner of a Facebook group. Um, but I watch how it helps people and it's, Definitely. Uh, it's really kind of, it's just really nice. So, uh, it really is my yep. pleasure. I appreciate you saying thank you, but I, I would do it. I, I, I can't think of a, a scenario in which I wouldn't do this. So it's, you know, it's my pleasure. I really like doing it. Plus I love talking. Hey. Where else would I talk? This <laughs> I mean, there you go. I'm finally in a situation where talking a lot is, it's not just okay. It's, you know, impermissible. It's necessary. So <laughs> I'm, I'm in my happy place. All right. Well, I'm going to push stop and you're going to tell me your best sex tip. A huge thanks to Susie for coming on the show and sharing her story. I'd also like to thank Touched by Type 1 and the Contour Next 1 blood glucose meter for being sponsors on this episode. Go to touchedbytype1.org or find them on Facebook and Instagram. And to get that meter, the really accurate one that's easy to carry, you heard the whole thing in the middle, contournext.com forward slash juice box. There's music left. This always makes me feel pressure. Um, uh, uh, oh, jeez. Uh, oh, I know what I should. Damn it. It's too late. No, it's not too late. I could just do it after the music. If you're a U.S. resident and you have type 1 diabetes or you're, or you're, a, you're, you're a, or you are a U.S. resident who is the caregiver of someone with type 1, please go fill out the survey at t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. You have to be a U.S. citizen, as I just said, uh, but um, it's a big deal. It helps people with type 1 diabetes. It supports the show. t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juice Box Podcast. Juiceboxpodcast.com. Find us on Facebook and Instagram at Juice Box Podcast. Looking for a private Facebook group for support or community? Or whatever you need, Juicebox Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes, 22,000 members strong. Head over there now. There's a conversation happening right now, I guarantee it, that you will find interesting, fun, or informative. Juicebox Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes, on Facebook.